What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fudge Muppet. I'm Scott here with Michael and Drew, as always, and today's topic is all about the Bosman. We haven't done a race video in a while, so we're going to be talking broadly about everything Bosma. Drew, Michael, take it away. All right, the Bosma, basically the Wood Elves, the forest people from Valenwood. Um, I guess on a surface level, they're very different to the other elves of Tamriel. Um, the, for starters, the males are said to be very short. The females are taller, but the males are very short. They're said to have the highest fertility of all the wood elves, which help them to spread in numbers the fastest um, and populate well, Tamriel quickly. I'm pretty sure there is the, somewhere it's written that they're the most populous elf. Mm. That there's the most wood elves are the highest proportion of yeah. all elves. Yeah, and, and they have also very... Um, well, there's an interesting polarity between two different concepts because in one way, they're very romantic in the nature sense. You know, they like nature, obviously, as we'll get into when we talk about their pantheon a bit, but they're also extremely violent. So there's this loving, violent kind of like mix, which I think makes them really cool. Yeah, well, just to clarify, like violent, not as in like any way aggressive or anything. It's, it's Savage. just that... Yeah, they're like the hunt, they, you know, hunting's a part of their thing and they have, you know, they're carnivorous. They have to eat basically anything they kill, which includes other people, if you adhere to the Green Pact. And they will kill, yeah. but they will kill outsiders if you mess with their vegetation yeah. and their forest. Yeah, well... I mean, culturally, well, they would see killing other mortals very differently to a lot of other cultures yeah. would, because if you're going to harvest... Their, their bones, their meat, all of that stuff, then it's really not that big of a deal if you do it as a Bosma. You know, you're not going to be shunned uh, for killing people. Because as a general rule, they're, they're known as one of the most um, peaceful races in the way that they have never instigated a war with another or like invaded another nation or anything. And they also live among communities of other groups. So, you know, there's there's wood orcs in there, there's centaurs in there, you know, minotaurs, at times aelids, imga. So... They are quite chill and accepting. And another part of that too, which will tie into when we talk to their mythology a little bit, but with um, Ifri, they, they treat as like the spirit of the now. So I guess similar to sort of Argonians, I guess even to Reachman to an extent, but a different philosophy on it. They're very, they're not like really entrenched in the past. So I feel like they're a kind of people that don't necessarily hold grudges because i mean if they did they'd have a lot of reason to hold grudges well, one of the things as well you have to consider and we'll get into how there's kind of a difference between modern wood elves and kind of older ones in their how strict how strictly they follow the green pact um but there's this whole concept that they are peaceful because if they kill someone they know they have to eat them they have to use those resources they have to eat mm. that meat and it's like are you feeling hungry <laughs> like you want to yeah. kill this person because it's going to be a massive hassle if you do sure there's benefit to harvesting different things but there's also you know the arduous task of doing it all well it's like they, it creates an gone i was just going to say they're known to like fast before big battles mm -hmm. so if they know they'll like fast for days before they're going to have so they can feast after they yeah you know, i win. think that's really really cool and obviously um just talking generally about them the bosma they're an incredibly resourceful race because they've had to learn how to make all these different things and live in the forest. And, you know, as much as you think you don't need the vegetation, simply not being able to chop down trees to build things with um, hampers you quite a bit. So, yeah, that's what I was going to bring up because it's like it creates an interesting dynamic. It's like obviously compared to most races, maybe alongside the Argonians, they seem to be the least aggressive, at least outside of their own borders. But if you think about the restrictions of the pact, they're never going to be trying to compete with other powers. You know, they're not they're not building empires or they're not building proper like strongholds and things. They can't really advance beyond just kind of like tribal society. Um, in in a way, their their best defense is purely coincidental in the fact that because they've done nothing to their land, their land is very hard to penetrate. Yeah, because that's yeah. the thing. Even to build roads through Valenwood. Um, you know, in th look, lots of lots has changed, but in theory, to build roads, you need to destroy vegetation, right? You need to destroy the grass mm -hmm. that you build a road on, and they're not allowed to do that. So, you know, even just walking through what you would call streets can be really tricky. But they still have open plains and areas and and things like that too, it's and they can make their 
um, kind of habitats using special magic as well. That kind of like what the Telvani do with mushroom towers. Mm. The wood elves can use magic to change the shape of trees around them to kind of suit what they need. It's because mm. it ties into their mythology that they're they're not allowed to forcefully change the forest they have to kind of ask permission essentially which is what their magic is it's, it's like communicating with the with the living things and i think it's called pact magic and they do a lot of chanting um and it can i think it can take days and they've even said to have been in fasting states before doing that not just before it battle might be a good idea just so if anyone who has basically no idea of the bosmer or, or very little the 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 main idea with the green pact is that the bosma were once part of this big ooze this sort of big ever like and they all these had these ever-changing forms and this actual this idea of this ooze is also um kind i don't know if i can't remember if it's explicitly called the ooze but a similar kind of principle of ever-changing forms is there in the mythologies of, of um the khajiit and elsewhere who have a similar similar ideas um but basically these group they made a pact with ifri who was the like forest, uh, like a forest god, basically, and uh, in Valenwood. And when they made this pact, it's basically that they can, they will have stabilized forms, so they can be the Bosma that you see today and become the Bosma and live here peacefully and great and everything. But you just cannot harm any of the forest, any of the nature, only um, animals, other animals and stuff. So all of their, um, all of their tools, all of their food, everything has to be um, acquired from animals and you know beetles and anything that's like a living thing but no vegetation yeah. or plant life so it's it's in a way it's the opposite of being a vegan um yeah it's the complete opposite everything's animal products so basically you can have meat you can have milk and you can have honey um honey being from insects so you know that's pretty much it even their alcohol is fermented pig's milk um it's which like jagger or something isn't it yeah 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 it's kind of hard to properly understand like we've said it before this probably it probably evolves over time as they may become a bit more um open to new ideas but it's it's hard to say exactly how they would respond to foreign foreigners or natives chopping down trees in valenwood because you see a lot of mention of it being a crime against their religion even if somebody else does it and chops a chops down a tree in valenwood you see cultures like the wood orcs for example who build kind of big wooden strongholds so there are other sources that say, oh, they're kind of okay with it. So it's, I think, it's an interesting... I think it kind of uh, ends up being like they do tend to find like these pragmatic loopholes where they can kind of somewhat tolerate it because it's kind of like, oh, but we benefit from all of the minerals mined and, and, and stuff like that from the wood orcs. So they can destroy the nature and sell it to us. It's We're not mm. breaking the pact, but do you know what I mean? Like, So you can imagine some would be absolutely zealous and against the real hardcore green pactors but then there could be ones that are a little bit more fluid they're like oh yeah you know we're not technically from, doing it so i was gonna say from the vibe of things it seems like the more city-based metropolitan ones are the ones who are more okay with it you know the more modern wood mm. elves whereas the ones who live out in the more rural areas away from society tend to be more traditional and live their life more in line with the green pact mm. um yeah, it, I, it's interesting to think too. Sorry, with mines, like that, that's the other thing. It's the same as building roads. You can't excavate a site without destroying the vegetation there. Mm. So they yeah. don't even really have metalworking or woodworking, and so they build their weapons out of bones quite often, out of a variety of things, but quite often bones. It's um, pretty much bones, leather, sinew, um, and stuff. I, I've heard idea. that um, taking from a Khajiit's gut. Um, to make like bowstrings, I think, and stuff like that uh, is a very high quality decision in crafting well, their bows. And naturally, because of this too, in terms of like weapons, some of the most effective weapons that you could forge without metal, like so you're not going to be making these great metal swords and all that kind of stuff, is you do have the bows, which can be, you know, carved from bone and stuff like that and the sinewy bits and make bowstrings. You can make a bow entirely from from um and they're, and they're meant to be incredibly good bows too yeah. with different arrows from i don't know how this makes sense you'd think it would just be based on the shape but i guess density could have something to do with it probably but i've heard them say that bird arrows like bird bones are more like um not agile light and travel faster whereas yeah. like you know your mammoth bone arrow type things are like heavier with a bigger impact um, yeah yeah, I think I, I know it's in a book, isn't it? I think 
I isn't it so. about like or something like that but I, that could also just be kind of a bit of a like you know metaphorically kind of or believing the powers there or something but the biggest thing like Bosma archers are um obviously they're the best in in tamriel being known to snatch and fire arrows in one continuous motion so you know take legolas from lord of the rings movies you can kind of imagine that and then when you put them in a big forest that they know like the back of their hand and they're small nimble and light and they can kind of like dart between the branches and shoot arrows like they could be truly fearsome enemies and i think that's the best thing about them in valen is it's it's all guerrilla warfare for them defending against them uh, against any foreign powers that come in though then again the kajita because- pretty nimble but yeah but then again because they're not the most united group of people um at times, they they seem to be walked over as well. They're sort of like peaceful, like non warlike. Do you know what I mean? Like it's soft. Like for example, like when the Aldmeri Dominion basically is like, oh, here's an old treaty, and the, and the Clovians are getting too rough. You know, you, you, we're going to take you under our wing. And and do you know what I mean? Even though there's the Cameron Dynasty, it's kind of like more like little Valenwood nations that kind of cooperate and they have spiritual leaders, but it's a bit more like a a federation feeling rather than a strict like you know emperor or king at the top kind of thing there is there are, are at times but you know it ebbs and flows it's not like a yeah well like even among bosma you can imagine that um the kind of the populated city areas that may actually be they may have been managed so that it's not just overgrown forest they would be very different to rural bosma because if you imagine the small rural bosma who are used to these untouched forests like an interesting thing about forests in general is that you know, like um, historically in the real world, you'd have kings who would like burn a forest down to get rid of all of the brush so that you can see animals running through the forest so you can actually hit them and kill them. Whereas um, if you imagine it's completely untouched, the brush is like, say, up to the, you know, up to the shoulder height of some of these small Bosma. And it's just impossible to see your enemy. So you can imagine that even like um, city-born Bosma may have no idea how to how to traverse their own landscape. So you can imagine that it's very there's lots of little enclaves and groups who just mm. barely communicate. Well, and then that's the other thing. Valenwood, by nature too, but because of all of that, um, has fostered lots of mini communities, like whether that be of you know, like we said, wood orcs or centaurs and groups. But like you know, some of the last uh, Aelid survivors, um, refugees, um, were in Valenwood and, and settled there for a while before they eventually like you know bred out or moved or whatnot, mm. but faded from existence. Yeah, and I, also, I'm pretty sure even uh, uh, actually, at least um, during the a- Aelid slaving, a lot of slaves, um, m- uh, human slaves, fled to Valenwood as well, and they would be chill mm. in Valenwood. The Bosma wouldn't bother them. Yeah, I, I can imagine as well that um, a lot of the a lot of the Bosma people um, the, in the more rural areas, particularly, would also have some of the more strong traditions in things that aren't the Green Pact. So. Besides the Green Pact, the Bosma have other weird traditions. Um, one of them's the right to thievery, uh, which is basically like you can steal something from someone, give it back to them, and demand a sum of money equal to the item's value. So say you steal someone's necklace worth a thousand septums, then you go, oh, I stole this, here you go. You owe me a thousand septums now because mm-hmm. I stole this from you. Um, obviously, incentivizing thievery would also add to the how nimble they are. In addition to mm. having to traverse the forests, they produce some of the best thieves and the best assassins. Um, also, as well, hunting. Think of that too. You have to hunt everything you eat. You can't just pick a berry to satisfy the need for food. You have to kill. Um, the other weird tradition they have, which I think would be more common in... Because this is the thing. In the city, can you imagine it as much? I think the right of thievery would kind of get like mm. mocked by those least traditional and it's but funny like there's more in rural areas yeah it'd be a bigger culture adjustment imagine do you know when like bosma like they went to cyrodiil or something too like it probably gives them that really bad <laughs> reputation <laughs> they stole something and were like oh i stole this and <laughs> yeah. yeah that doesn't apply there um the other weird tradition they have and i'm not sure what the name of it is off the, the, to- the top of my head but is it's the kidnap when- one yeah so when yeah, someone morning dies, wars morning wars like as like in like morning when you mourn M-O-U-R-N. someone you are and yeah yeah so it's when you kill someone, right? Um, sorry, when someone in your family dies, in a Bosma family dies, they go out and kidnap someone from another family, I guess, and bring them into their own and replace that person, which is just so weird. Like they give yeah. them the belongings of the person, the identity of the person, like the the wealth and everything, and eventually their position. I'm pretty sure they put them through a torture trial 
to see if they're like worthy as well, something like that. Yeah, um, it's so it's like if, if I survive, went and yeah, if I went and killed your brother, yep. then you came and kidnapped one of my like other males of my tribe, and then you made them your symbolic brother, and you basically yeah, like, I'm like you, know, you are my brother, and I'm like calling yeah. him my brother's name and like dressing him in my brother's clothes and giving them my brother's house, <laughs> yeah, all of this kind kind of thing. Yeah, that's what it would be like. Um, yeah, which is just super, super weird. And it again, say- I, I do think that would be more of like a traditional rural folk activity. I can't yeah. see it happening in like the main cities as it much. It does say ancient tradition referencing back to the first era dates. And that could be like yeah. early first era. Well, like you can't really imagine it's it worth much mentioning. Anymore. It's, cause oh, it's yeah. super cool. And do you know, is the kidnapping definitely based on who did the wrongdoing? Like if someone wrongs me, I kidnap some someone from them, or is it just I just go and kidnap um, whoever? Yeah, hold on, let me just uh, find the actual original source. I'll read what the I can pull it up on the wiki and stuff. I just want to get the real source as well. Is um, in nearly everywhere outside cities, the Valenwood Bosmeri tribes in the wilds of Valenwood still practice the tradition of mourning war. When a tribe member is slain, he or she is symbolically replaced via a hostage-taking raid on neighboring tribe. So if the deceased was an especially powerful or prestigious member of tribe, multiple captives may be taken to That's replace so them. so weird. So yeah, it's not necessarily the person who, you know, did yeah, who slayed just, one of yours. You just go on a raid and cap, you know, capture from a na- neighboring band, which again enforces this whole idea that they're not necessarily the most united people if they're just raiding each other and stealing family members. How does this work? Like, imagine you were, especially from a neighboring area, that implies it's nearby. So it's like, what? You then have a run-in or meet up with your old family somewhere in the forest, and you're like, no, I'm Michael's brother now. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Are you supposed to expect that these captives are going to be loyal to the new family as well? Are they going to LARP for the rest of their lives? Yeah, I mean, it does say... So it says, uh, the tradition of Morning War is followed, still followed nearly everywhere outside the cities. And this is in Elder Scrolls Online. So, like, this is Second Era still. Um, After a period of physical torture, supposedly test their worthiness, the captive is joyously joyously welcomed into the clan. This sudden reversal from horrific abuse to loving embrace befuddled the weak wits of a Bosma captive who cleaves to his tormentors. Traditionally, the victim was given the deceased tribe member's position, uh, possessions and family, though this practice may be rarely honored nowadays. So it's it's really weird. It's like uh, cultural Stockholm syndrome. You torture them until like, yes, yes, I am part of the family. I am your brother. Uh, like, yeah, it's a bit I know, weird. but you'd still think it would revert eventually. Or, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess people can get Proper messed up. Proper brainwashing. And- yeah. I mean, you can see why it'd be such a monumental achievement that King Epley are kind of united, obviously not completely, but united Valenwood and started his dynasty. Maybe, you know, because there was, there was so much wild Bosma culture to try and rein in that that's why it was such a big deal that they that it became the first year of the first era. Yeah, the marking point. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal, but... Yeah. And it, it makes some of the other things you hear about from Valen would not sound so bad in comparison to the normal populace. Like the Kareth Vampire Clan, for example, who can transform into mist. Um, and there's mm. another... Isn't there another vampire clan who... Telboth? Yeah, the Telboth who... Like, that's do they the, take the place of a child in a family or something? Yeah, that's the similar... A similar it's a kind I mean, of like... Now it, feels now, now it feels on brand, doesn't it? For yeah. Valen Wood, it feels on brand when you consider the Morning Wars. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, it shifts the topic a little bit, but it when you when we talk about all of this stuff, you can kind of see why there's confusion as to the true origins of the Bosma. Like, if you're supposed to just believe that they migrated from Somerset, the same as most of the um, the elven groups on Tamriel, with all the other groups, you can, you can at least see where they connected to Somerset and where they connected to the Oldma, but with the Bosma, it just... It it feels like night and day, like completely alien. Well, so it makes you want to buy into the like a ma- other theory. A massive part, I think, arguably, you could go and say that like stories and myth are like the most important for like it, they're taken a bit more literally and, and for the Bosma. Like you have the spinners being the Bosmeri priests who record the stories of the people, past, present, and future, all that kind of stuff, and they're associated with Ifri, the storyteller, which is their most um, 
you know, most important God in the Bosmeri pantheon and also the one they made the green pact with. And he's said to have like, you know, spanned stories to make all of the, all of Valenwood. Yeah, all, all his songs and stuff. stuff. Cause he's the God of song and forest. And, and especially because you can kind of see that like the spinners, you know, as priests maintaining history, culture, all that kind of stuff, they can kind of, and you know, a lot of it from understanding it was, um, they're like, a, it's a lot of oral storytelling. So they're kind of like, it can kind of be manipulated and changed so the myth can evolve and so on. And also when you throw in that they just don't have the same sort of, um, I guess, uh, what do you call it? Um, reverence oh, for the past. And so yeah. they don't hold on to it so hard. So they're really like, oh, in the now. And that's that real romantic idea of like, yeah, man, let's just, you know. Yeah. Uh, consider as well with the Green Pact, they don't have paper. Yeah, they they cannot well, just produce paper. They do write. I've heard on like animal skins, or you're allowed to, but it's not obviously as economical. I think, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name paper. because well, before we had parchment, we had vellum in the real world, yeah. which was um, yeah the animal skins. So yeah, I guess they could use that, but yeah, it's not quite as easy to yeah, produce. I think I did read somewhere about the using stones. Um, and also they can use leaves. And I think it's because I guess you'd imagine if you're not harming it, like if it was just some kind of ink on top of it, it's not, do you not stab in the leaf? I guess. Yeah. Cause this is the thing with the green pact It's a little bit funny, a tiny bit insane when you kind of like, Oh, if you step on a blade of grass and you kick and then you like rip, rip the roots out or something as you kick back, it's like, Oh yeah. Cause as you run broken. through a forest, you're kind of like stomping. Yeah. On or if you stuff. snap a branch as you're running through those trees, but I guess they learn to like be so nimble and, and light footed that they don't snap a branch. Yeah. Or minimize like imagine, it incredibly. Well, because imagine, imagine if it was actually taken so seriously, like religiously, like if you snap the branch, you're breaking the pact. So you'd be extra careful and, and sort yeah. of like, you know. Yeah. yeah, I guess, I guess we kind of touched on their origins a bit. Perhaps we should um, dive into that a little bit to talk about how the wood elves came to be. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you can cut. You can kind of tie it in with the Khajiit. There's there's two ways of looking at it that can go hand in hand. But yeah, you you do have the idea that that Ifa Ifra Ifra. I always I always struggle to what pronounce are they called? his name. Je- Jeff Jeff Jeffa Jeffa. The Wood Elves specifically. The Wood Elves don't, don't call him Jeff. Oh, they call him Ifa. Is that the High old Elf? Um, that's the old yeah. Name. yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, Scott pretty much already mentioned that there was kind of like the formlessness of the ooze and he shaped it into the, to the wild and then the, the, the animals and people that lived there and then made the pact with them. But the, the idea of the ooze kind of works with the Khajiit mythology because you've got Anur and Fatimai having their litters of, um, kittens and one of them is, is Nerni and Nerni's gift from, from, uh, Anur, no, not Anur, Fatimai is to, be able to create the like to populate the world with people and azura was allowed to take some of these people and shape them to be the best climbers all of that to to make the um the khajiit and it was it was ifa who couldn't keep a secret probably because you know he loves to sing and tell stories that he kind of informed nerni what was going on so part of the revenge on azura was to allow um ifa to create his own people from this kind of not quite defined peoples that Nerni was supposed to populate the world with. So he created the Bosma. I think, I think it's also worth mentioning too, that so some people might like a lot of older sort of traditional ideas and look before ESO is that you have sort of the Oldma and then Ultima, and then they sort of go, you know, they migrate off to Valenwood, they become the Kaima, the um, Bosma, then there's the Kaima up in Resdane and so on. But it doesn't actually really stack up anymore with all of the new mythology stuff with both the Khajiit mythology, the entire Khajiit mythology and the entire Bosma mythology, both referencing this ooze, this idea that they've always been there. Plus you also don't have Topol arriving in Valenwood or anything like that. And so he sort of shows up and then goes around, but there's no sort of, we don't really hear explicitly any time about as some sort of diaspora to Valenwood, then they become the Bosma. So, Everyone else has a story like that yeah. about how they got to where they came. Yeah, you know, whether that be Dereni, Kaima, Osma. Plus, you know, they do yeah. have a lot in common with the Khajiit in the sense that they change forms. Mm-hmm. Like the Khajiit change forms with the moon. And mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, besides the creation myth, which obviously links them together. But the idea of the Bosma just being this shapeless um, form, but also the wild hunt, how they can like 
shape shift into these, you know, ravenous beast demons. You know, it, it all ties in thematically, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, and and I guess so. For for those who don't know that um, the the wild hunt is the one time where they can go to their bestial forms and stuff. Basically, in times of great crisis, um, and one of the most famous ones uh, instances of that is when you have King Borgus of Skyrim at the time in the early first era. This is in times of the Elysian Order. He came down to the Elysians because he was all into this Elysian religion, which was quite inherently anti-Elven, and he wanted to come down and basically start a war against Valenwood and, and, you know, eliminate the elves. So basically the, the kind of like a um, pre-planning sort of response from the... Um, uh, some people say it was like uh, anticipating this to happen. The, the wood elves, you know, invoked the wild hunt and went and uh, killed King Borgus. And that also, you know, that changed up Skyrim a fair bit. But if you're curious, when you go to get the Jagged Crown... Um, in the Skyrim quest line, that's King Borgus as a, as a Draga sitting on that throne and so on. And he was the one killed by the uh, Wild Hunt. And they eventually so. kill themselves in a massive cannibalistic mm. orgy, which is pretty scary. It's meant to be pretty scary and it takes a massive group of them to invoke it. A lot of the powers that the Wood Elves have seem to be group powers. Like even the chanting to, uh, you know, um, change the shape of trees into things. It tends to be like a group activity. It's also worth mentioning that some of, you know, if you can see some of the Bosma with kind of uh, bestial features like some like antlers or just some different, and I mean, there's cool concept art from like yeah. Priest or Mora and stuff with more bestial features, but um, they, they do have the, it's kind of like seen as like little remnants of, of the wild hunt kind of thing. So like giving them little antlers and bits and pieces and decals. And, and I mean, even look cool. at, I know it's obviously a product of their environment and I know that you know, Elven, any race can change drastically over the course of all of the eras. But if you actually look at their skill sets, they're also in line with the Khajiit. Like the nimble, fast, kind of like thieving mm. kind of stuff. So, you know, and they're also much yeah. shorter than other Elves. I mean, yeah. the males are at least. They don't have that crazy magic affinity that High they're Elves do. In Skyrim, it's not the shortest anymore. Yeah, they changed yeah, but it, it feels kinda... very it feels very gameplay to me. Because the way the way I imagined it, if if it was even, it, you could argue that it's not a traditional like a, a typical society that usually has like distinct gender roles. But I always imagined the uh, the Bosma being shorter and smaller was a benefit to them in terms of being like the alpha hunter because they're quicker and nimble and they'll quickly get there and shoot the prey. So they actually became the best rather than someone's bigger which would explain the sexual dimorphism while while the women are taller than the men but mm. you know the manlet kingdom in the forest <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah um i guess we can also mention in terms of religion just just so we don't completely go away from that but they obviously ifri is the most important part they also do kind of recognize Oriel, and they do have a lot of um Similar pantheon, like, you know, your classic RKA, Xarxes, Mara, sort of similar Aldemary pantheon stuff. However, I wonder what you guys think about this, but uh, the whole idea that they kind of come from Oriel, even, I actually wonder if this is actually sort of propaganda that's kind of imparted onto them by the High Elves post, because, like, I imagine really, like, where is Oriel coming to it? If they're just these big ooze, and then, you know, Ifri shapes them and so on. And they, they look like elves, but I don't think it necessarily... Like, they're, they're necessarily descended from Auriel in the same way that, like, the High Elves or something might be. And I feel like this sort of idea is something that's imparted onto them by the High Elves and Aelid culture surrounding them rather than necessarily being the truth. It could be, but I don't know what you I guys I mean, think. it would definitely help the Old Miri Dominion to kind of foster an alliance, wouldn't it? Hmm. To, to yeah. really hmm. push this idea that they're and I mean, all one same similar thing and and while we don't know like a great deal about the philosophy of of the bosma they kind of just like they're, they're just part of nature and tell stories and sing songs and whatnot but um a, a lot of what the 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 ultima um worship is kind of the idea that they're separate from this realm of mundus they're separate from nern and you know we talked about it last episode it's kind of like their prison essentially but you don't really get any you don't 
you don't get any inclination of that being the attitude of any Bosma. You, you wouldn't have a Bosma in Valen Wood who's just, you know, one with nature and, and you know, loves their, their homeland and think, I don't, I don't want any part of this. I want to get away from it and get back up to a theory. If anything, As... it would be the opposite. The last thing they would want is to unmake the world because the creation of the world is what gave them form. In a way, like if the ooze yeah. was this, you know, chaotic shapelessness, why would they the... want to revert? It's that same mm. thing too. It's like inherently like if you're sort of like, you know, fundamentalist like Altamari and so on, they're always looking into the past and how, you know, the gods were wronged in the past and that's why we're in this condition now. We must preserve the purity of the past, of the past. Whereas if you got this like, you know, live in the now, man, you know. And they can't smoke weed though, but they do smoke beetles out of bone pipes instead. <laughs> so psychedelic beetles perhaps. Well, you know, you can imagine in their culture where they're just, you know, they don't they don't do anything to manage the forest. There's just dead trees everywhere that have just, you know, died over hundreds and thousands of years. And and you'd imagine that we're, with Ifa's creations, when they die, they'd just want to return to the soil and become part of some new life. They'd want to become compost, essentially. They're not going to be thinking about their grand afterlife mm. um, and all of this stuff. They're, I imagine that they care more about being part of Valenwood forever. Some other quick notes just to add as well um, onto their religion is not accepting the limitation of just eight divines and how it sort of seems because they're like this, you know, hippie sort of, you know, storyteller God kind of things. They're most important, but they do have a lot of um, cults and stuff that formulate. And, and I feel like they're the most um, agreeable with other religions that come in. They might accept other gods and go, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Maybe there is something to that. Like, you have cults to her scene and, and also like Joan and Jode, that is the two moon gods. You've got, um, you know, Herma Mora appears and even um, Bandar borrowed from the Khajiit, the, that Khajiit bandit god, basically. Hmm. But they but seem... I wouldn't, I wouldn't put her scene in their main pantheon. No, no, none of them. Are they, like, they're oh, just or significant. Or her scene's agreeable because it's very well, shape-shifting sig- werewolf. But it's not really out, her scene outside of the werewolf part, is not Like his actual mm. like sportsmanship, he's hunting. His hunting's the biggest focus for him, which is very agreeable with Bosma culture, which is why they're the In a way so in a way it would come it would somewhat come down to um how much we think they're related to the Khajiit and how much their mythology aligns with the Khajiit mythology. Because an interesting thing about Khajiit mythology is there's the idea that Nerni shunned her scene in favor of Ifa and and her scene was torn up about this and and he got revenge by killing one of um, Ifa's Grat elks so this mm. great stag and wearing that creature's head mm. you know as as you see her scene depicted so um, it may be different for the Bosma but if they're similar to the Khajiit he may be a bit of an antagonistic figure which doesn't necessarily mean they wouldn't yeah. worship him in some weird corners. Well, the, so- you know? the source is varieties of faith, Tamriel, but it's specifically it's like additional deities with significant Bosmeri cults, her scene being one mm. of them. I like mean, there, main... there, is a book, there is a book and it was removed from Elder Scrolls Online. So that's why you won't really see it quoted. Mm. Um, but it's called The Blessings of Her Scene. And it says, It is the will of her scene that the Bosma become as we were in the Dawn Age before um, Ifri trapped us in a single shape, before he told us our story and took away our freedom. The gift of her scene is the gift of a second shape. The sacrament of her scene is the scent of prey on the wind, the taste of blood on the tongue. Praise her scene and his houndsmen. Rise up and reject the tyranny of shape and story. So it's, mm. I know it's a, it is a removed book. We have to mm. keep that in mind, but that's a very anti um, kind yeah, of Ifri I can e- modern. Yeah, I can easily imagine. Thing. Yeah. Um, it's interesting too. I mean, we can kind of uh, start diving into that, but there is obviously, like any culture, but there is divergence among their beliefs. Like, there's, you know, your Green Pack traditionalists, and then there's a lot who are like to hell with that. And especially if you sort of think about it in as if you believe all the parabolic Kalpa kind of stuff, you know, moving away from the mythic into the mundane, you can kind of go a lot of people's attachment to gods or the same reverence of practices that are religious and associated with the gods might be less so. And they can, you know, because they, they, it might be the case that you go to chop down a bit of forest in Valenwood and nothing happens except you make a bunch of money and then yeah. you're like, well, <laughs> you, you pff, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Well, you can imagine them justifying it as well. It's like, you know, if you chop down, chop down a tree, plant one as well. Or do, you know, you, could, you can see a million ways they could theoretically work around um, anything. Yeah. yeah, even burning forests, you can argue that the ash makes it more fertile, and, and you know, but that, that's that would be a big leap for them. But 
there's definitely ways you can justify doing just about anything which is yeah an interesting thing about worship it's, it's strange like and i guess this changed because this is the other thing too to consider with um valenwood as well it's been a part of multiple empires it's been a part of it because and everyone looks at like the empire versus elven and then like the empire takes over and that changes things but it's like even the aldebari dominion coming in changes things and like i was just suggesting the idea that they're all like descended from oriel and they're really like altmeri pantheon stuff in like getting into Valenwood because like I don't know I can't really imagine like these you know tribal green packed ifri sort of like you know covered in bone armor tribal Bosma mm. who are heaps isolated all being like yes we came from Oriel this, well, well, this great, they'd yeah. be killed they'd be like kind of they'd die out like we know the Thalmor um, and the old Miri Dominion were doing a lot of cleansing in Valenwood where they would kill people who speak out against them mm. and you can imagine the people who speak out against them probably you know tend to be on that more traditional um strong wood elf yeah value side and they'd be the ones well, who die out and then the ones that remain you know they breed and produce more offspring who are taught what the old want them to or what the yeah. old mary dominion want them I to learn and it, so on i guess the good thing for those traditional bosma is that if they're very rural and really good at being part of nature they can essentially just do a homer into the bush and kind of just disappear <laughs> before they get cleansed <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Yeah, but you do get things like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure, this is just off memory, but I'm pretty sure, um, you know that thief, there's a there's a wood elf thief who was a part of, he was like a, a noble or something in Valenwood who joined the Thieves Guild in Skyrim and he got kicked out of his home. But um, I think even he was saying, it's like, oh, I was in a great manner with the finest wine and all that kind of stuff. Like they do import all their, if, when you start importing all of these luxuries from other places, because, you know, I'm not breaking the green pact because it's not Valenwood. You can see they'll like kind of get addicted to that. Like you know, if you if you're drinking wine, you're drinking you know a fruit of like you know vegetation, then it's sort of like I know it's from somewhere else, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like a slippery slope for them. I feel like they'd be like, oh, what's one berry off yeah. the tree? It's that degree of separation. Like I didn't do it. I didn't see anything yeah. happen. I can do. I can still do it. Yeah. I think it's Bosma. The the most traditional green packed Bosma ideology stuff is practically impossible to keep 100 percent true to unless you are some sort of tribal society like the earliest wood elves living in nature yeah. i mean you, you can know. you can look at it in the sense of myth makes reality too and how different gods and different ideas get power from worship and also from people believing in them but mm. earlier on if more wood elves really believed in the green pact perhaps the effects were more adverse and then if you kill out kind of like erasing talos from the mythic but if you kill out lots of bosma who believe in the green pact and who think that bad things happen to those who go against the green pact then perhaps the green pact actually starts having less effect on those who break perhaps, it. yeah just just food for thought i mean you could also throw out there too like i wonder if the cameron dynasty is actually part of the problem because i mean cameron dynasty first starts off you know it, it builds itself it builds itself up as a dynasty but it, then it kind of fades again but um you know, and like we talked about, like they become part of the 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 Riemann Empire, and then you got the Third Era, the Camerons, who again, man, they managed to survive as a Bosmeri power. They're reinstituted as the rulers and so on. But they're always kind of it's kind of like uh, Cameron Dynasty setting up as this big sort of civilization of control is kind of antithetical to like the core principles of the Bosma, which is like you know the live in peace and in the now, the romantic, the hunting, the Green Pact. It, it's kind of you know bad for their traditional belief. If you know what I mean. Mm. So, the Camerons are vehicles for destruction of nature. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, all progress in a way, because it's like you know, it's the Green Pact is kind of like anti-industrialization sentiment that mm. you can kind of parallel with the real world industrial revolution and stuff. Is that the more society will progress, the worse it's going to be for nature, most likely, um, and that will happen as. Tamriel develops, assuming the uh, Kalpa doesn't come to an end anytime soon. Or if they'll just be stuck in the same age for thousands and thousands yeah. more years. Yeah, I, I just found a piece of lore. It's not, uh, you know how we were saying how they're the most populous race of elves in Tamriel because they're extremely fertile and stuff. I like how it says that they're also more amorously inclined. Mm. Mm. Well, they're all about planting seeds, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's kind of laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Um, other little, like, I guess we can start talking about some of the just um, other little fun little facts and so on. But like, I like how they've been 
reference to um, or known to sharpen their teeth into points for the most mm. some of the most kind like we obviously don't see this in game but like some of them more like you know for the carnivorous so they can tear easier and obviously you know you can see they look pretty traditional like you if you go like mega tribal or caveman kind of like images in your head they're all wearing big bone headdresses and, and animal skins and leather and so on i actually think eso does an okay job sometimes with it other times a lot of the bosmarama can kind of look just too elven but i guess it makes sense if you've got you know the old mary dominion going on at that time but i mean but, yeah that, it's just a bit warcraft overall the whole game's armor sets yeah it, I, don't, I don't i don't take the armors incredibly seriously in Elder scrolls online yeah i don't know i feel like there's a nice balance to cast with with elder scroll um with fantasy armors and stuff like i i like ones that are a little bit more interesting and not necessarily realistic but i still like them to i don't know just have a bit of taste class you know <laughs> I, like they feel realistic it's, it's easy when it's like one step from realistic versus like 10 steps from you know what i mean mm. just but that's just me i guess and a few others yeah but, um yeah so i i guess i guess too like obviously like we're saying like all of their um decorations everything bone resin is another one i'm interested why how they can use resin because isn't isn't resins like um from trees yeah it's a plant product yeah i don't know where they draw the line on some of these things resin yeah like is... if, if a berry falls off a tree or off a plant like can, can i eat it is that fair game then is it is a dead plant fair game like probably not i don't know yeah because resin's not like alive yeah isn't it like it's basically the equivalent of a scab or something if i remember quickly like for a tree yeah is it just like hardened sap or is am i completely well ho- well mm, here's an interesting idea um you can get resin from certain i'll call them animals but um like insects or s- like snails for oh example. true yeah. What are they? They going around picking up snail trails and <laughs> yeah. building stuff out of them. I don't know. There's all kinds of kind of like gooey, weird things, and um, spider webs would be something that I don't know if they've done anything with, but that would be really cool. You know, tribals used mm. to fish with spider webs. Yeah, you can make like a whole design. Yeah, spider webs really like the right Powerful, one yeah. overlapped with each other can be really strong. Mm. yeah yeah that's cool it's crazy so there's this there used to be like i think it's only referenced in a concept art or something of dunma but using spider silk cloaks like all of their you know stuff is made of spider silk um that's cool because you can this stuff i'm pretty sure you can make spider silk now it's just it's, it's harder like you need kind of indu- industrial sort of stuff to do it it's not as easy a moth because moths like more easily domesticated and kind of like managed than spiders yeah. Can't remember the exact, an expert can tell me in the comments all about silk <laughs> but, but um the other thing i guess we're going to talk about too is like like we were saying that there's this kind of like loosey-goosey sort of uh organization of valen wood that it's not there's kind of it's kind of a system where you you have like lots of different like rulers of different authority but they kind of cross over in jurisdictions sometimes and and not so there's these concepts of there's the um the two spiritual leaders, which is the, the Green Lady and the Sylvanar. And the Sylvanar is kind of like the, the voice of the people, is kind of, is supposed to be kind of their like, uh, their, their like laws and, and, and emotional sort of It's guide. like their spirituality and the Green Lady is their physicality. Yeah. But they're both still spiritual leaders of sorts. It is actually yeah. funny, you reminding me also of um, how it works in elsewhere with the Khajiit. I mean, you know, we have the main... But then you also have like clan mothers and things. And there is a separation in um, role and kind of like what, what they do and, and authority and hierarchy yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Well, once again, they're also like pretty traditionally Khajiit where like, you know, the 16 different kingdoms and they're all sort of spread. And then, you know, the main has a spiritual sort of role. But, and then there's the clan mothers. And then, I mean, at times they've been, you know, united into the kingdoms of Anaquina and Pelantine. But um, yeah. You know yeah it's like well while the sylvanar represents the civilized nature of the current bosma the green lady has the raw physicality and passion of their primal past if yeah. the sylvanar dies 
His green lady's bestial nature is irrevocably unleashed and her fury turned on all those involved until she joins him in death. Upon, well, there's a... Yeah. The, I was just saying there's a story, I think, about the how one of the, the green ladies, when the, her Sylvanar died, swam all the way to Pyantony and killed a whole bunch of them and got revenge. But it's it's... I'm pretty sure it's said that their their physical feats are likened um, to like demigods in terms of like they really are exceptional in terms of it. So I guess when you consider that swimming to Pyantony is not impossible if you're an actual demigod. True. Yeah. Plus their their nature of um, telling stories and probably spinning big embellishments and things like that of a lot of past deeds. It is funny that they're called too. spinners, isn't it? Like. Cause yeah. In our, in our language, at least, like spin and spinning something is usually like putting a an embellishment or some kind of like mm. story, bit of a it. flourish yeah. on it to make it a bit more interesting. But yeah, I guess yeah. there's a lot about um, Valenwood that, like, I think even now you could argue is still somewhat mysterious because you know there are, there are so many, like as the pocket guide says at the top, there are so many creatures that are mentioned that live in Valenwood, yet you you would never know what they look like. You've never they've never really been seen by many people. And then obviously we were talking about the wild hunt and there's there's a phrase from some text that's like um every creature that exists was a part of a previous cow or a previous previous era's wild hunt. So oh, you yeah. you can almost imagine that creatures and, and things are still popping up around Valenwood that we just haven't even got recorded yet. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of mystery there too. Like, uh, just when you said that, it reminded me too, um, like Falinesti, their moving tree city and how sometimes it just disappears or roots itself or, or various different, um, mm. things, but like, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So I feel like if still has, cause it feels like, mm. do you know how it feels like he's just due to this non God a little bit, like has no power. Cause he doesn't really, you don't hear about him doing much outside of the ancient wild hunts or the ancient moving city and stuff like that, you know, but, yeah. um, I'll, I'll yeah. also share another tradition of the Wood Elves uh, is the Pact Hostage. So the Pact Hostage is basically like if you're doing a task for someone, you put up a loved one as collateral <laughs> um, and then yeah. you get your loved one back when you complete the task. But if you fail, then the loved one gets um, killed and cooked up and then served to them. <laughs> as a atonement right uh, eating you know, the, it's called the the cooked up person is called the unthrapa eating the unthrapa represents eating one's failure okie mm, dokie it's a tribal Got thing a holiday to Valenwood yeah don't Sounds make lovely. any contracts with the tribes <laughs> don't do it huh. um yeah. I guess also um the other thing too you know we were mentioning the uh the you know you're speaking all of the things into into existence like the trees and so on and moving yeah, so yeah. you know very the the bosma green speakers are the ones using the rituals to grow villages and such like that but there's also some other interesting things they can make some wooden items with um that song and so on so as you can imagine like i don't know grow a bowl or, mm. or something i don't know but the other thing this is an interesting one is like below the ground the trees share a common root system which delivers hot sap into each hut to keep them warm so they've got indoor heating too man like <laughs> it's, it's all like it's all very it. convenient isn't it yeah. here's here's a bunch of restrictions on your life oh but i'll bend reality so that it doesn't actually impact you except for you can't eat berries yeah starts to sound a bit similar to black marsh in some areas yeah of like you know the the environment changing um on ifra's will kind of like with a hist and then yeah and then there's the interconnected network maybe uh i mean this is a bit you know maybe the hist are tunneling right right the way over to valenwood wherever there's trees they've got a uh they've got their finger or their branches I f um i feel like the uh curveball for elder scroll six would it ever potentially be a Valenwood? You know how if you can go look into the previous games, so like Oblivion or Morrowind, and you can see stuff that foreshadows Skyrim somewhat. Yeah. Um, in the same way you can look into it, there's plenty of Hammerfell stuff. Um, but also there's, you know, obviously like uh, stuff with Malborn and the Thalmor conspiracy quest and so on. And some people have thought Valenwood, probably before the teaser trailer and so on. Mm. But um, my take is I just don't think they'll ever do Valenwood because I don't think it can be realized well enough in a game yet. 
Do you know what I mean? Like it's just a, the, too much like a verticality in trees. If you truly wanted to do it just, I know they do it in ESO, but... But you wouldn't want Elder Scrolls 6 to yeah. look like how Elder Scrolls Online is built in a lot of the locations. So. Yeah, it's like kind of... Even Black Marsh, for example. Yeah. I would want a different feeling, Black Marsh, a bit more inhospitable. But then it's like, well, why would you have a game there? And how do you go there? And, you know, yeah. it gets a bit silly. I think Hammerfell or High Rock is a pretty perfect oh, location. F- for sure. Um, I guess the another one of these groups of, uh, you know, we were saying there's different beings, Sylvanar and the spiritual leaders, and then there's different authoritarian figures. There's also the Wilder King or Wilder Queen, mm. um, the sort of living God. It's kind of like a, almost like a mantle that different mortals who can connect well with nature have taken on in sort of this tradition and sort of runs the pristine jungles of the green shade region of Valenwood. But, um, so it's kind of like a demigod, but, you know, kind of a, a lo- it feels like a local god. You know, you know, those old mythological stories where you find like, oh, this is the, the king of this forest. And then, and, and, you know, they, they're the caretaker of this forest and everything within. It's kind of like that, less so of like a big metaphysical kind of all encompassing religious god, if that makes sense. Mm. But yeah. What um, else is there on these wood elves? Because I'm trying to I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to separate it and not talk about Valenwood too much because then it gets into like you know a super location based discussion. Yeah, I mean you can uh, like I can, we can go over basic things like utilizing bone clubs, axes, and spears, blades, or stone of obsidian. So they have used obsidian, so that's a like rock they can get away with using. Uh, um, and I guess you don't have to necessarily dig and, you know, big mines for that kind of stuff. Well, but like you just co- find a cliff and like dig out the wall of a cliff without touching any grass. Well, yeah. Like if you think about it in ancient, in even in ancient real world earth, like you would get veins of iron and stuff that were exposed. It's just, that's the first thing early cultures nabbed on and it gets mined and you don't really see it anymore. Like, you know, the first people who were working metalworking with bronze weren't digging like, you know, miles underground to get to the deep stuff. Like a lot of it will come up and around or, or close to like also like uh, water holes and rivers and stuff. So, so is it assumed that like if his terms on the, on the green pact would have been so long as it's not alive, you can mess with it. Or do you think well, it was kind of like, don't touch pl- my land. The problem is plant. I think. Yeah. I think so it, it's plants as opposed to land. Yeah. Because yeah, well, a rock you, is not yeah. a plant. Yeah. If you think about well, it, the no, problem with like, mines and stuff and roads is mines, you dig down, but there's all the root systems and stuff that you're going to interfere with or clearing roads. You're like actively killing and wiping off brush. Whereas if there's a piece of rock exposed or, or veins and stuff that are exposed, you know, um, can you, can you, I mean, I'm not an expert, but can you like properly, properly utilize anything you mine Without kind of like a forge or like without like yeah well that's what it, it, and burning it, it over not really but obsidian you can like that's what the Aztecs right. and stuff used because it can like they can it's like kind of like a flint kind of thing and you can mm. it's like volcanic rock that can break because they wouldn't use it's not like an obsidian sword it's like they I forgot the it's got an Aztec name for it but the big clubs but with like blades of obsidian into it because it's sharp as hell but it's they're brittle they'll mm. still like mm. snap. Um, the other thing is obviously their composite horn bows are arguably the finest in Tamriel and apparently they do import a bunch of metal weapons though and Altmeri tutelage has benefited many Bosmeri swordsmen but yeah um, wink wink that's some propaganda <laughs> yeah man uh, <laughs> Altmeri are just uh, they, they ain't nice I don't vibe them, eh? <laughs> no, I just, there's always things like, I always like, oh, it'd be so cool, like Valen would without all the Ultima coming in and doing their thing. I mean, you can make the same arguments for the Empire, like imperializing everything too. But like, you know. I mean, yeah, they, they tend to be a bit more, I don't know, benevolent in their attempts to do it, I think, for the most part, you know? They the can't, they, you know, when you, yeah, when you imagine the Empire going into, say, Black Marsh, it's almost like they, they try to just help the local community to kind of progress as opposed to like I, th- I think I, I, I kind of get like I mean I get what you kind of mean it's it's in the way that it's part of their strategy to somewhat adopt the local advantages and customs so that they can have a smooth transition kind of like you know well, like what the Roman Empire did as opposed to the um, Ultimary which have just such a radical purity mm-hmm. like we're like the you best must kind of thing and agree yeah. with us on everything and we're better yeah, than the, you 
Because, like, you know, yeah, Romans... The Imperials that, would allow diversity, you yeah. know, in their culture, for example. Well, interestingly, they don't with their... Well, I mean, they bring the Imperial cult everywhere, but I guess they don't outlaw the native religions. Mm. But they, um... They except Daedra. frown upon some of them. Yeah. But, like, um... Because, you know, you have, like, the Roman Empire adopting gods of local areas. Like, you know, or they go, oh, I like this Egyptian god, I'll take that one. And then it's <laughs> fine. Like... Yeah. But you don't really see that with, um... The Imperials march. I don't think they've adopted anything. You mean with the, the Imperial old, um, cult? Oh, the cult. No, I mean with the Empire. They don't adopt any. I mean, they're hundred percent because we were saying that they're more. Yeah, yeah. They just allow it. They don't adopt yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I think we've kind of talked pretty much. You know, I'm sure there's little details here and there um, that we've made law videos about them before, and there'll probably be some more. Like I, they'll come up the, again. <laughs> you've got the general, the general gist. Um, yeah. of everything. Oh, I guess the only last thing would be, which is an interesting little piece of information that, um, that they grew their tower, like the metaphysical tower, the Grat Oak or so on, that they grew it, which is just with the perchance acorn, acorn mm. which is like their tower's stone, which is really on But is that canon? Brand. Perchance acorn? It yeah. It is canon. Yeah. yeah. It's in, El- what is it, Elden Tree or whatever that book is called? Yeah, uh, the Orbrick Enigma, the Elden Tree. Yeah. Um, the quote, the, the Boich elves, which is a Bosma, old name for it, were of the earth bones who most hearkened to Jeffa and his green songs. They did not build a tower, they grew it. A great a grat oak, a great grat oak, whose roots sprang from a perchance acorn. And this grat was their stone. Oak. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, so it's... Yeah, that's it's the brand. Bosma. An extremely yeah. cool race. They're not the most metaphysically relevant to no. the rest of the world, really. Like they're kind of they're, they're a, a bit bunch like of hippies Argonians in the bush, <laughs> in the sense that they're like Argonians in the sense that a lot of their cool law is not based around uh, gods and um, you know metaphysical stuff. And second best yeah. elf for sure. What's the best? <laughs> well, oh, the- yeah, of course. Because <laughs> yeah, because in the Khajiit mythology, like the the idea was if I chose to make them look elven and and be kind of related to the elves almost as a response to Azura making the Khajiit beasts, because it said, make them like elves and not like beasts. But at the end of the day, they kind of came into being the exact same way. So they're really, in my opinion, they're pretty much just as much a beast folk as the Argonians and the Khajiit are. They're beasts. Mm. Yeah. Certified Bosma. Certified freak. (laughs) Seven days a week. (laughs) (laughs) Some weird energy to end the podcast. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Social media links are in the description below, and we will see you next time.